Good morning to the bride. Today we're going to be discussing how he's going to speak and how he is currently speaking to the bride. Speaking only the words in red, I ask you to pray about this and seek the Father's face and see what he reveals to you through this. Luke chapter 22, starting in verse 39. Again, only reading the words in red. Pray that you enter not into temptation. Now's not the time to be playing bride. It's time to wake up. Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, thine be done. Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Holy Spirit is calling you to wake up even more than what you already have in the Spirit. He wants to speak to you. He's got something for you to share, whether it be at work, with friends and family, to try to wake up as many people as you can to help get more folks aware. Judas, betrayeth thou the Son of Man with a kiss? That reminded me, Holy Spirit did, of the kiss of death. And that made me think of the lukewarm church that claimed to be a part of the bride, but they were only playing church. Verse 52. Be you come out. Almost as if he's talking to us as if we're going home. is against a thief with swords and with staves. <clears throat> when I was daily with you in the temple, you stretched forth no hand against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Holy Spirit led me to read this in Greek, not actually in Greek, but to translate it from the original Greek. <laughs> This is what he said. Luke 22, verse 53. Every day being of me, with you in the temple, not did you stretch out a hand against me. It means you weren't against the Father. But you were for him. But this is of you. The hour, meaning it's our time to go, comma, in the power of darkness. It's time for us to head home. Also, when I researched the stretching of the hands, this is what I found. I'll let you read this for yourself. Just a quick Google is all I did. stretching forth of your hands as is you've accepted it and you're ready to go home now I'm not going to lie to you this next verse in verse 61 of Luke 22 kind of had me a little frazzled for a moment but after praying I could almost hear the father laughing at me before the cock crow thou shalt deny me thrice is this really the time this can't be the time is this it? That's how I took that to mean. And now, obviously, we won't be denying it, but that's how Holy Spirit led me to understand it. Verse 67. If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I also ask you, you will not answer me. Nor let me go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If I tell you, you will not believe. Almost kind of answering, is this the time? Is this it? And if I also ask you, you will not answer me. The way I took that 
<clears throat> was we won't have to speak. We'll be able to, to speak telepathically in heaven. Nor let me go. For when we get to hug the Father, sweet Jesus. <clears throat> Listen to verse 69. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. And ye say that I am. And that reminded me of what God asked Moses. Who do I tell them that sent me? I tell them I am that I am. <clears throat> Next verse is found in Luke 23. Verse 3. Thou sayest it. We are saying and we are proclaiming that he is I am. <laughs> Starting in verse 28 of Luke 23. Jesus is not speaking to us. I think it's very clear who he's speaking to during this time. Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps which never gave suck. Woe to those that give suck in that day. Verse 30. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us and the hills cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall they do in the dry? Then Jesus says this during that time. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus then will say, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Possibly speaking of the new, the new heaven and the new earth. <laughs> Father, into thy hands do I commend my spirit. Possibly speaking of during that time of tribulation or our rapture. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. Two witnesses, whoever they may be, will rise in three days during that time. What manner of communication are these that ye have one to another as you walk and are sad? These are sad times that they're going to be living in. O oh, fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And even during that time, they're going to not come to him. But Jesus says this to us, Peace be unto you. Why are you troubled, and why do your thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me. And when we get to heaven, we'll be able to touch and feel and see just like we do now, but with glorified bodies. Next part says, have you any meat? And I took that to mean two things, knowledge and actual food. The Father's going to feed us this marriage supper of the Lamb. These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all the things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and spoken in the prophet Psalms concerning me. Thus, as it is written, thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among the nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye here in the city of Jerusalem until you be endured, endowed with power from on high. The new Jerusalem. We're going to have power while we're up there. Glory be to God. <laughs> Good morning, bride. <laughs>